Hello, this is Assistant Professor Vishnu Shankar from Department of Mechanical Engineering, Rajagiri School of Engineering and Technology, Kakanad. Welcome back to the RSET Online Lecture Series on Basics of Mechanical Engineering. Today, I will be discussing about the topic Power Transmission Devices. I have referred Introduction to Automobile Engineering NPTEL Lectures Power Transmission Elements NPTEL Lectures and Fundamentals of Design MIT Lectures while preparing this lecture. Power Transmission Devices The different power transmission devices are Bells and Bell Drives Gears and Gear Trains Rope Drives Chain Drives Brakes and Clutches Bells and Bell Drives depends on friction between belt and pulley for their function. Gears and gear trains are positive drives. Rope drives depends on the friction between rope and pulley for their function. Chain drives are positive drives. Brakes depend on the friction between brake shoe and wheel contact surface. F clutches friction as well as positive drives. For friction dependent drives, slip is always present and is possible by means of flexible, moderate strength materials. Belts, ropes, etc. are the examples. So to reduce slip between contact surface, either we need to increase the area of contact which makes the device bulky or increase the contact force between the contact surface or use materials with high coefficient of friction. For positive drives, slip won't be there be between contact surfaces and is possible by means of rigid, high strength and specially fabricated materials. Belts and belt drives. A belt drive is used to transmit power from one shaft to another by means of frictional contact. The power is transmitted by a continuous flexible belt which runs on pulleys mounted on the shafts. Advantages of belt drives. Belt drives are suitable for medium and long center distance compared with gears which are suitable for only short center distance. Shafts need to be aligned properly but belts provides a smooth drive with ability to absorb shock. Relatively cheap to install and maintain. The disadvantages of belt drives are belt drives have some slip that is belt unable to keep up with the pulley and creep that is extension of the belt. Lubrication should be avoided in belt drives. Belts are subjected to wear in adverse conditions. Types of belts. The different types of belts as you can see are the flat belts, V belts and timing belts. What are flat belts? Flat belts are made of rubber or canvas or synthetic polymers. Chance of slippage is more and it is used with low torque. What are V belts? V belts consist of polymer or steel fibers embedded in rubber. Low slippage or alignment problems due to the wedging action of the belt on the grooved pulley used with low center to center distance and high torque. Timing belts. Timing belts are used as an alternative for roller chains. Less noise is generated compared to roller chains. No slippage hence used for timing purpose like turning cam shafts. They are expensive. Pulley construction is complicated. Types of belt drives. The two types of belt drives are open belt drive and cross belt drive. Open belt drive. When center distance is more, belt whips. If center distance is less, belt slip increases. Cross belt drive. Wrap angle is more, so power transmitting capacity is more. Belts rub against itself and decreases the life. The open belt drive and cross belt drive is shown as in the figure. 
there are two sides that is the tight side as well as the slack side chain drives a chain drive consists of an endless chain wrapped around the sprockets or tooth wheel advantages of chain drives over other drives are suitable for medium center distance between shafts chain drives are compact compared to belt drives chain drives are positive drives that is there is no slip efficiency of chain drive is high and chains are easy to replace the disadvantages of chain drives are after prolonged use and wear chain stretches and may leave the sprocket if tension is not adjusted from time to time chain drives are not suitable for non parallel shafts chain drives require housing chain drives require precise alignment of shafts compared to belt drives proper lubrication and maintenance is required compared to belt drives and generates noise while working now coming to the power transmission chain parts a roller chain consists of five main parts as given in the figure they are pin bushing roller inner link plate and outer link plate the second power transmission device is gears and gear drives gears are defined as tooth wheels which transmit power and motion from one shaft to another by means of successive engagement of teeth the advantages of gear drives over belt and chain drives are it is a positive drive that is no slip so power transmission is highly efficient used for small center to center distance bulky if used for large center to center distances it can transmit very large power compared to belt or chain drives it can transmit motion at very low velocities which are not possible with belt drives so they are used in clocks and watches velocity ratio can be changed over a wide range example is gearbox in automobile the disadvantages of gears and gear drives are the complicated manufacturing high maintenance cost need careful lubrication and cleanliness need precise alignment of shafts types of gears the first type of gear is the spur gear in spur gears teeth are cut parallel to the axis of the shaft as you can see from the figure spur gears are used only when shafts are parallel profile of the gear tooth is in the shape of an involute curve spur gears impose only radial loads to the shafts because teeth are cut parallel to the shaft spur gears generate noise at high speeds because contact between two meshing teeth are sudden spur gears are easy to manufacture the second type of gear is the helical gear in helical gears the teeth are cut at an angle with the axis of the shaft as shown in the figure helical gears are used even when shafts are not parallel helical gears are less noisy at high speeds because contact between two meshing teeth are gradual a right hand gear helical gear meshes only with a left hand helical gear helical gears impose both radial and axial load to shafts because teeth are cut inclined to the shaft to avoid axial load on the shaft double helical gears herring bone gears are used and the third type of gear is the bevel gear bevel gears have the shape of a truncated cone as shown in the figure size of the gear to decreases towards the apex of the cone bevel gears are used for intersecting inclined shafts both straight and inclined teeth can be cut on bevel gears bevel gears impose both radial and axial loads on the shafts the third type of gear is the worm gear worm gear consists of a worm and a worm wheel as shown in the figure the worm is in the form of a threaded screw which meshes with the matching wheel worm gears are used where shaft axes do not intersect and are perpendicular to each other worm imposes high axial load and wheel imposes high radial load on the shafts 
warm gears are used for high speed reduction around 100 is to 1. The working of worm and wheel is shown in the animation. As you can see, worm and worm wheel axes are non parallel and non intersecting. Here, worm, which is the threaded shaft, will be rotating at very high speed compared to the wheel. Example, for a speed reduction of 100 is to 1, the worm has to rotate 100 times for the wheel to rotate once. The applications are for indexing mechanism in gear manufacturing, where teeth has to be cut at precise angles on the periphery of the gear. Now, coming to the next topic, that is the types of gear trains. Gear trains are arrangements of two or more meshing gears to transmit power from one shaft to another. The different types of gear trains are simple gear train, compound gear train, reverted gear train, epicyclic gear train and track and pinion. Now coming to the first type of gear train which is the simple gear train. In simple gear train gears are arranged in a series manner as shown in the animation. There are two devices, the driver shaft and the driven shaft. Whereas sometimes the distance between the input and the output shaft may be large as shown in the second animation. Then we have to provide either large size gears or one or more intermediate gears. But providing large gears are inconvenient. Also if number of intermediate gears are odd then both input and output shafts rotate in the same direction as shown in the second animation. If even, then they rotate in opposite directions. Intermediate gears are also called ideal gears because they are only used for bridging between input and output gear and to change direction. The second gear train is the compound gear train. When a single shaft contains more than one gear, it is called a compound gear train. Here gear A is in contact with B and gear C is in contact with D and gear B and C are on the same shaft as shown in the animation. Advantages of compound gear train is that a much larger speed reduction from input to output shaft can be obtained with smaller gears because if simple gear train is to be used for large speed reduction, then last gear has to be very large. So compound gear trains are compact than simple gear train. Compound gear trains are used in automobile gearbox due to the above reason. The third gear train is the reverted gear train. A type of compound gear train which is represented in the animation and consists of four gears, gear 1, gear 2, gear 3 and gear 4 and have coaxial shafts. Applications Used when input and output shafts are coaxial, they are used in automobile gearbox. The next gear train is the rack and pinion arrangement as shown in the animation. It is used to convert rotary motion of pinion into linear motion of the rack. Now coming to the last type of gear train which is the epicyclic gear train. In epicyclic gear train there are four components. They are first one is the sun gear, then the planet gear, then the ring gear and the last one is called the arm. As you can see from the figure, the sun gear will be having a rotary motion. The planet gear will be having rotary as well as revolutionary motion. Ring gear will be having an internal teeth and the arm is called the planet carrier which carries the entire gears. Used for very high speed reductions with gears of moderate size in lesser space. These are used in one automobile differentials, automobile gearbox and wristwatches etc. 
there are three arrangements possible for an epicyclic gear train the first arrangement is shown in the animation as you can see the input is given to the sun gear the ring gear remains fixed and the output is obtained at the arm in the second arrangement as you can see from the animation the input is given to the sun gear the arm remains fixed and the output is obtained at the ring gear and the last arrangement of an epicyclic gear train is shown in this animation where the input is given to the arm the sun gear remains fixed and the output is obtained at the ring gear now coming to the last topic of today's session the last power transmission device which is the plate clutch plate clutches are mainly used in automobile applications there are two main types push type and pull type plate clutches push type consists of a diaphragm pressure plate for disengaging the clutch pull type consists of a compression spring for disengaging the clutch plate clutch of same size cannot transmit high torque as compared to a cone clutch also engagement and disengagement is sudden because all of the flat frictional surfaces comes in contact at the same time the above disadvantage are overcome by using multi plate clutch from this animation you can see the disengagement as well as the engagement of the clutch coming to the friction lining material used in brake and clutch moderate hard materials are used for friction lining to prevent wear of other engine components if friction lining is too hard it will wear out the contacting parts than itself if friction lining is too soft it will wear out soon ceramic materials are typically used in heavy applications such as racing or heavy duty applications like trucks should be able to dissipate heat continuously for smooth working brakes and clutches makes use of friction for speed control and power transmission and this friction generates a lot of heat example in brakes kinetic energy of vehicle is converted to heat energy due to friction if this heat is not continuously carried away it will soften the friction lining and causes slip which decreases the efficiency before ending today's session i will be briefing about the topics covered in today's session the session was all about the power transmission devices in the first part the first power transmission device bells and bell drives were discussed in which the types of bells types of bell drives were explained in detail then the second section was about the types of gears which was the second power transmission device in which we studied the different types of gears such as spur gear helical gear bevel gear and ohm gear they are working as well as their applications then the third section was about the types of gear trains the different types of gear trains such as simple gear train combo gear train reverted gear train rack and pinion gear train and epicyclic gear train were explained in detail and finally while concluding we discussed about the fourth type of power transmission device which is the plate clutch hope you enjoyed today's session and see you soon stay tuned